So, Corinne, tell everyone at first, what did you call this podcast? This podcast is Family Shares Ice Cream. No, 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 no. What did you call the podcast? Uh, yes. Sit down. What did you call the podcast Daddy Does with Miss Molly? The Worst Parents Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to the Not Great Terrible po Podcast that Miss Molly and my dad, that is the Terrible Dad, speaks on camera. It stopped. Your dad is not here. I know. Why'd you say that? <laughs> Not Great Parents podcast. Um, I'm Not Great Parent Molly, and this is a Not Great Parent right here, Nathan. So Hello, yes. Welcome back. This is a, a mini episode we're doing today, mini episode four. And I, I might say my most excited mini episode uh, we've had yet because uh, you guys helped create I know. We've been asking you guys to send in questions, and we are starting to get some. So today yes. we're focusing on a question that we received, and so before we get into the question, let's remind you all that uh, we really aren't trying to be terrible parents and no, calling ourselves no, terrible parents. No. Um, as my as my daughter as proudly uh, said, uh, welcome to the, the not great terrible parents. Yeah. She's like, why would you make a podcast about being a terrible dad? I mean, my husband said the same thing, right? <laughs> so, And I had to say to him. First of all, you haven't listened to it. But second of all, um, I had to remind him, which we'll also talk about, is the fact that we aren't trying to be great parents as the world's defined yes. great. We're trying to be good parents and and parents who raise our children in the yes. goodness of God and steering our kids towards his kingdom and the, goodness there, that, and the goodness and the life that he has for us here. Because there is a way that the pursuit of greatness, and I, I know for those of you who listen all the time, this sounds repetitive, but it's important we get in our head. The pursuit of greatness inevitably does sabotage my pursuit of goodness. It Jesus is. says my primary pursuit is to seek first God's kingdom, his righteousness, or his goodness, what he calls good, and all these other things, as we said, they're sprinkles. Right. They'll they'll they they they'll they'll get thrown they'll get thrown in or they won't and you won't notice. Right. You'll be so been, consumed with the goodness you won't be thinking too much about the greatness. But the pursuit of great is exhausting. <laughs> yes, and you often miss good. Yes. You often get so many sprinkles, you don't even you can't even get to the ice cream. Exactly. So. If you did not listen to our last of our last full podcast episode, it was completely on this idea of sprinkles. So make sure to uh go yeah. back and go check back that and one listen out to that. because it is really foundational to a lot of the things that we um talk about on here and it's really Really important as a parent to think through that yep. and how that impacts your life. So today we are going to discuss the question that we received yep. on the uh, form. So before we go there, if you have questions, we, the form is available in the, in, the, in the description. And we want your questions about anything related to parenting, about anything we talked about, anything any questions that you might have. And Even if there's like a specific scenario in your life, you go, my teen just said this, or this is what's going on. I need some help. I need some advice. Mm -hmm. uh, even if even if you've gotten the answer by the time we've, even if you've come up with a solution, it might be helpful to other parents to be able yeah. to hear the discussion so that they're able to think through, oh, if that happens or when that happens in my life, I'll be prepared. Right. Or if you just think there's some great things you think we should talk about with other yes. parents. Yes. Let us know. We are open to any topics that you guys and might have. And that's kind of what it, this question is. Yeah. I mean, it is, it, first of all, it's anonymous. So we're not going to like say, uh, so-and-so provided this scenario. Yeah. From right now from now we know he's room. not a great parent. <laughs> no, we're not asking. We're not going to do that. So this question came in to us this week or last yeah. week, but it's. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the idea behind it was, I'll just read it as it was written. Um, once again, it was anonymous. It said, I enjoyed listening about social media. We had a mini episode, our very first mini episode was about social, social media. media. It said it was helpful. However, you didn't speak specifically about Snapchat, and I would like to hear your views slash opinions about that. Thanks. Well, right. you're welcome, because you're about to get some views and uh, opinions. You're asking for a Nathan to talk about his opinion, yeah, and I'm right there with you. So. I got a lot of them. So, uh, first, so let's hit, let's talk for those who don't know first just about Snapchat in general. Mm -hmm. What Snapchat is? So, Snapchat is an app. Um, it's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. It is for. 
for the most part, the teen's favorite app for for communication with so. each other. Yeah, at least it was when I was in youth ministry. Producer and, Sawyer, who's our youth minister, I think you agree that a lot of teens are still using this. Yeah, it's it's number one still. Yeah, right. so it is it is a social media app uh, because. Uh, social media, in case you don't know, I think this is a term now that gets thrown around so much people don't know. The idea behind social media is that the content of the media, what you are consuming, mm-hmm. is created uh, socially. Right. It is created. So Facebook, I'm posting. Communicating something to people. Right. I'm broadcasting it to the world to be able to see. That does happen in Snapchat, but it is primarily One-to-one used as, or- yes, a messaging app. You are able to send messages to your friends, and those can be photos, they can be a chat, they can be videos, and the idea is that those messages, uh, you put a time limit to them, and then they disappear. Now, I think it's important to have a conversation with your teenager that nothing disappears. Right. That's uh, always something uh, we're going to say, is that what goes out in yeah. social media is going to be there forever somewhere. The internet is forever, and they have the ability, obviously, Snapchat does. Uh, you can screenshot it. Now, it lets you know when someone screenshots um, a, a, a photo that you've taken. In fact, I've told the story before of I was on my Snapchat one day back when I was doing youth ministry, and I saw that someone had taken a screenshot of a snap I'd sent, and I did not remember sending that a snap. And so I texted them, and I said, can you tell me what I sent you a snap of? And, and then turned, you cross your fingers. Yeah. Like, was, oh, no. I was like, did I like butt dial somebody and you just have footage of a, of, of oh, a conversation right. or something? But it turned out it was my six-month-old daughter had gotten a hold of my phone and had taken the picture three I inches away it. from her face. And so that's why they had screenshotted it because they thought it was cute. But, yeah, it lets you know someone screenshotted it and it goes away. Um, and I think the idea, like we've talked about with Be Real, I know, and I used to use Snapchat pretty heavily. I don't mm-hmm. anymore. The appeal of it is the um, spontaneity of it. Mm-hmm. It feels very instantaneous. It feels like a chat room. It feels like I'm just somewhere and I'm just taking... Communicating a, with my friends. Yeah, yeah and I'm just, know. I take a picture and I send it and go, hey, you got to see this. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... You bring them into whatever you're at, wherever you're at right. in that moment. Right. And so um, Snapchat is, it allows you to do that. It also, uh, I mean, now everyone has them, but they were the uh, originators of stories. The idea mm-hmm. that you have this 24 hour kind of feed right. that you're, that you're feeding. Not this curated post that's a picture. That's forever. You know, that's, that's, that's a forever thing. That's on a, others. This is right. a, what's going on in your moment right now. And the only thing. people who can see your stories and the only people who can send or receive snaps from you are people that you both mutually have agreed to be friends with. Right. So this isn't like Facebook that things are just public for everyone to see. Uh, you have to be friends with one another. Now, becoming friends is just as simple as I want to be friends with you, and then you accept it. And so I think um, the concerns that come around Snapchat most often um, are around who is communicating with my kids and what are they communicating? I mean, let's just be honest. On here, the the most common thing that I think Snapchat is known as is a sexting app. Yep. It kind of got the reputation of that early on, just like MySpace and AOL Instant Messenger, uh, when we were when we were younger, was kind of got the reputation as this is the place that predators are kind of looking for right. children. I don't think that or was just ever this, like it, things are inappropriate. On this sure, app, right? Facebook never for whatever reason got that reputation, mm-hmm. but both MySpace and Instant Messenger kind of got that, and uh, that was never even in the top 1% of, 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 of what was being used on the app, but that was always out there. And certainly that does happen mm-hmm. uh, on, on Snapchat and certainly can be used for that. And on most apps, there is a way well, to have that happen. <laughs> so, yes. So not specific necessarily to Snapchat. However, we do know that there's a bit of a reputation sometimes around that. And I of- think... In the teenage mind that is undeveloped, the fact that they disappear, there's a feeling of this is safer. If I did happen to send an inappropriate picture, it disappears and it will never appear again. But then unfortunately, as we know, those things uh, get shared and passed on. And so um, I would say when you ask about our views or opinions, because it's kind of loosely based, I assume that they're asking, like, what are the dangers? Should I allow my teenager to be on this app? Yes, and I think it's important to say that primarily our teenagers are using it as a communication back and forth with each other. And the vast majority of what they're going to send and say is going to be normal 
teenage stuff that is not, uh, yes. you know, if you think your child is on there sending all kinds of pictures back and forth, it probably is pictures of stuff, content that you'd be totally fine with right. most of the time. And I think, <laughs> so I think that's a really good place to start. I think in the pursuit of greatness where my, my primary job is to make sure my kid is successful and doesn't get into too much bad stuff. What a great parent thinks is, I just need to remove anything that could be a temptation or could be harmful. I just need to remove it. But as we've talked about, we're not trying to necessarily protect our kids from information. We're trying to prepare them for reality. And so, one, I think this is a good point to say Snapchat. Now, okay, let me say this. Snapchat, the user agreement says you have to be 13 years old. Obviously, you could lie about your age and kids younger than 13 have it. But... If you're talking about, well, what's a recommended age? I would say they recommend 13 years. I wouldn't be even having a conversation with my 11-year-old about it. I'd just say, hey, you got to be 13. We're not going to have a conversation until right. you're 13. Now, once they're 13, that doesn't mean I would say, absolutely, go ahead and do it. I'm just saying, you as a parent, I think that's an easy starting place. Yeah. Now, there's another part of this I think is important to say is, if your kid has a phone at 11, Unless you are constantly monitoring it just because you say they can't have it doesn't mean they don't download it and create one anyway. So I think this is the part that we really want to put the, the focus of our conversation is you need to be having conversations with your kids. Yes, and we're gonna I, we're gonna say this over and over yes. and over again, and that is we want you to have conversations that are really healthy conversations back and forth with your children, not yes. conversations with you just tell, talking at them, but yes. real conversations with them about well, how, how and, um, you know, how they're going to use the social media, what's involved in it, things like that, because otherwise you're just going to talk at them and they're going to tune you out. I think there's this <laughs> mythological idea of what a great parent is, the one who said, well, I just put my foot down. I told them. No social media, no Snapchat. And then inevitably, when your kid's like 23, they come back to you and go, by the way, when I was 12, I totally had Snapchat. Yeah. I know you think like, you know, inevitably, like when we're at family get togethers and me oh, and my and wife. one of those siblings outs the other siblings. Oh, yeah. They're oh, like, yeah, oh, by the way, I totally bought them alcohol when they were 18 and you went on that cruise and you weren't yeah. here. And, and then they're like, oh, well, that would have never happened under yes. my roof. And we're like, well, it did. You just weren't there. So there's this great mythological idea we have that a great parent's the one who sets the rules, and they are followed and even when they're not there. And I think what a good parent is, is one who goes, I want to have conversations with you and help you understand that at a teenager, you have less control. They're not in your house all the time. Right. If, you, if they have a phone, which most middle schoolers I know have some device, whether it's a phone or not, they have a device that they could download Snapchat on. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're going to be have to have that kind of open communication. Yes, and the, and having dialogue with your kids is going to take it away from me as the parent setting all these rules to the two of us are having conversation and we ultimately establish boundaries, healthy boundaries right. around the social media that we've mutually discussed, right? Right. And maybe there's going to be times the teenagers are not going to like the boundaries we put in place. Certainly, there's no. going to be some, but having the dialogue is the most foundational part of anything we're saying here is because yes. if you just come in and go yeah no more or you're going to you know no you can't ever have it or you had it and now we're not going to let you that is not going to help your relationship with your child at yes. all so and we've discussed this in some detail we even had uh, Jason Collins on one of our teaching pastors who's a counselor as well he talked in our first mini episode. You can find it if you go back in the feed. Uh, you'll see uh, the one about social media. So I think that's a, a great kind of resource there. But let's start with what are things, I'm because once again, it's a vague question. I'm going to assume for just argument's sake that this is a person who has a 13, 14, 15 right. year old who keeps asking, mom, I want Snapchat. And you're trying to figure out, should I let them have it? And maybe you're leaning towards, I want to let them have it, but I also know it might be dangerous. What are things I can do? So I think there are a few settings you can do to right. help help this. You can have a teen account within yes. Snapchat, right? So this is, this is, once again, this is all dependent on you having open conversations with them. Because your teenager could create a hidden account you don't know about, and all of that's true, and yes, that's terrifying. 
But if you are building the kind of relationship where you openly talk and you sit down with them and say, hey, look, I'm okay with you having Snapchat. If you have one that's a teen account, and a teen account is they log in because you have to be 13. They log in with their- Real age. Real age. So they say they're 15. <laughs> uh, they're 15. They say they're 15. It creates a teen account, which has some boundaries uh, around already some settings in place to protect them from people who might have ill intentions right. when trying to- befriend them. So the first thing I would do is have them set up a teen account. The second thing I would do is I would have uh, them accept, you, I would get an account personally, even if you're not planning on using it, you get, just have it. get your own account so that you can have this family center. Um, it's like a program that's within uh, uh, Snapchat that allows you to add your children as part of your family. And you as the parent then, when they accept it, uh, you can you can see who their friends are, so who are they communicating with. You can see who they're actually sending snaps to, how often the they are. The frequency. The frequency. You don't get to see, they get to have privacy, so your teenager can know, well, they're not seeing what I'm sending or how often. The content's private, but the number it, the number of interactions with the people. Right, you different. see, they're texting someone at 3 o'clock in the morning multiple times. Then you could have, now you have an ability to have it. Hey, I don't like you texting people at 3 o'clock in the morning. Let's talk about it. Yeah, or what were you texting <laughs> at 3 o'clock in the morning that you had to text at 3 right. o'clock in the morning? You know, I think those kind of conversations, it allows you to have one. They get a little bit of privacy. You get to prepare them. But once again... These are not settings you get to put in place to be a great parent who goes, I put the proper boundaries and no one can ever yeah. accuse me of not being a great parent. And I don't ever have to talk to my child. Yes. A good parent is one who puts these boundaries so they can have conversations of, hey, I saw you've been messaging so-and-so. Right. Or even, I've noticed you, you've you not been messaging your friend. Did something happen between right. you two? So you have the conversation up front about it. You get the, st the boundaries or the, the whatever it, you know, settings in place. And then... The conversation doesn't end there. It, 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 no, it, I would continue it and have one about don't ever accept a friend request from someone you don't know mm -hmm. because then they can send you things that, that you, you know, that you don't know this person. They, they even have an app. Now, you can turn this setting off, which I would have my teenager do. Turn off the map setting. One cool thing right. about Snapchat is... You can turn on your GPS where you can go, oh, I have friends that are nearby. Or if you're at like school or something, you'd be able to see all the people nearby. who are nearby and you could add them by that way. That's a cool feature, but obviously it could be a very dangerous feature. Absolutely. So I would not let my teenager have that on and say, hey, I don't want you just to be out at, you know, a, a restaurant and anybody in the restaurant could know what your where snap your code is, is. You know, mm -hmm. so I would have them turn those things off and tell them don't accept things from other people. But as we know, and once again, we talk about this on our episode on social media, there really is no way to protect your child from seeing things or being in conversations that you would not want them to be a part of. Mm -hmm. So let's just be honest. They're going to, there's a possibility and I would say maybe even a probability that they either will receive mm -hmm. explicit content, nude photos. They will maybe be solicited. Uh, and I don't even mean by, I don't even mean by like adults, right? They're Predators. Peers. They could be their peers. A boyfriend, a girlfriend, a friend at school that will say, hey, send me a photo. Send me this. Or they might because temptation is real. Your kid is a sinner. I was a sinner, still they am might a sinner. Be the solicitor. They might be saying, hey, let's send these photos. And I think what often ends up happening for parents is that they freak out. Oh, yeah. And go extreme. Extreme in this. And so, once again, I would keep the lines of communication open. So, we've already talked about the boundaries I'd put in place if you have a kid who doesn't have it and you're giving them the rules. But let's talk about what happens if you have a 17-year-old, 16-year-old who already has Snapchat. And when you start having conversations, you find out they have received some, or maybe they're being bullied. That's another big thing that happens through social media is they do have a friend school and they know this person, but things go bad and they start sending them harassing and mean and ugly and nasty things that, you know, with old bullying, it happened when you're at school and that was bad enough, but now it can follow you home. Mm -hmm. And when you're at home, you're just receiving these things. So how do you have the conversations around that? And I was telling Molly before, uh, I've been very open about this, so this is probably not shocking to most people, but I was uh, very addicted to pornography, uh, on internet pornography, um, from the age of about, I, I, I think the first time I saw a website was around 13. Mm -hmm. um, but by the time I was 15, it was a uh, daily problem, uh, multiple times a day problem. It was just constantly, frequently, and I didn't know at the time 
that my parents had accountability software, which is a whole other, right. you know, then you're like, oh, now they see everything. They know everything I've ever I've uh, kind of at. looked at. And I remember having a conversation where my dad came to me um, and it was one night we were, I was going to bed and he just pulled me aside and he just said, hey, I saw in our, in our history or whatever, you know, whatever it was. Uh, I thought I was very careful, but apparently wasn't that I careful. I say, I bet that was an oh no moment for you. Yeah, it was terrifying. <laughs> and I remember being a kid thinking, oh no, my dad knows this thing has happened. And uh, what he said to me instead, he got very, very soft about it. And if I remember correctly, he was very kind of tearful. And he just said, uh, that, I think the first words he said to me, I'm really sorry this has been a struggle for you. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, you know, lust is a struggle for every person, especially for men. It tends to be a, a, a big struggle. And he says, you're not weird. This is a normal thing for you to be curious about. And certainly once you start looking at it, it becomes hard to, you know, pull away from. And he said, I want, I want to help you. Mm -hmm. I want this not to be as much of a struggle for you. So we, we, we had like common sense. Common, maybe you shouldn't hang out down in the, because we had a computer room. Laptops weren't a, right. as big of a deal. So we had a computer room. He said, maybe once everyone goes to bed, you know, you shouldn't be hanging out alone downstairs. Mm -hmm. And maybe um, you shouldn't take like your laptop up to up to, up to your bedroom at night. You, you should leave those things down. He never said, I'm taking your phone away. I'm taking your laptop away. You're never getting on the internet again, which is often. And I'm not judging. I'm not judging because I'm a parent. a response you could have to that. It's a fearful response. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to set the boundaries and tell you what it is. He came to me, had a conversation, said, I know, I know, I know your heart. I know you want to follow Jesus. I bet you feel really guilty. And he goes, I felt, he goes, whenever I've had struggles like this, I feel really ashamed and I don't want you to ever feel ashamed around me. Mm -hmm. And the power of that conversation though it did not end my struggle with pornography, yeah. gave me the freedom that as an adult, I have been able to openly, I mean, on the internet where anyone can see it, right. openly have these conversations and eventually find freedom from this. Right. Um, and but, but if he'd approached you in a shameful way. Well, I've had or, the conversation or, or before. Or in a way that led you to feel even more ashamed of something that you probably already were. I had a friend who, um, because from this kind of opened the dialogue of, I started, well, I was a part of some sexual purity groups here at church where we would talk about it with mm -hmm. other teenage guys. And, we, and we'd had mm -hmm. some some men who were leading it and helping us to kind of deal with this. One of him told one of them told a story at one point of uh, he had accidentally... <laughs> bookmarked one of these websites as favorite nice. and, as a thing and <laughs> a his, favorite even. as a favorite and his dad just sat down and kind of looked at him and went favorite yes that's your favorite you know wow. and he's like and i was so ashamed because i didn't know how to explain to my dad it was an accident not an accident i went to the website it was an accident but now my dad thinks that i'm the kind of person you know and it was very shameful it was and i remember him saying like i just didn't think you were that kind of guy and so I think about as a dad, and my wife and I talk about this, that when our daughters are older, it's very likely that someone's going to either solicit one from them. And I'm not even talking about predators. Hopefully I've taught them well enough right. that when they see one from an adult, they don't know, they, they say no, right? Uh, that they don't even accept the friend request, but from other teenage boys. Mm -hmm. And that maybe they even at some point might m make a poor decision with that. Right. And I would hope I never have the conversation with them of, I didn't think you were that kind of girl. It really disappoints me. I would never want to take this conversation from a place of shame. No. Taking the conversation from a place of shame will carry through for yeah. the rest of their life. And that, you know, like you said, having your parents say, uh, I'm going to come alongside of you. What, you know, what should we do here? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what are some things that we, that yeah. you could do, but I can help you come up with so that, so that we put those boundaries in place or we help you with this. Yes. Knowing that your heart is good and knowing that's not what you want to do, that that's a totally different approach. Yes. And one that allows you to continue that relationship with your parent. And and because that you were addressed in that way, it didn't slam the door down for you to talk about it in the future. I know you said, you know, it didn't fix it right in that moment, no, but it, no. it kept that door and that line of communication open for you to be able to talk to your dad about it moving forward, I'm sure. Well, and open the door because this is what good parents 
you know, godly parents want in the end is I don't want them just to be able to have these conversations with me. I want them to be able to have other adults in their yes. life, other followers of Jesus that can help them with this. And eventually when they're when they're an adult, that they have brothers and sisters in Christ who can walk through difficult circumstances with them, that they don't feel ashamed to confess their sins because they know the, per, the person who you, I mean, it's, I think it's just natural. I see it in my kids when they do something wrong. Right. There's a degree of shame. I don't want my dad to see my face. I don't want them to be disappointed in me. But when they look at their parents and they don't see disappointment, they see heartbreak. They see, oh, I'm so sad for you. I'm so sad that this is so difficult for you because I love you and I've been there Mm -hmm. and I know what that feels like. I've made dumb decisions before and I want to help you. What that allows them to know is if I tell other brothers and sisters in Christ of this thing that I'm so ashamed of, they will, they will also help me, and there will be love and grace. And I don't say, I'm, I'm hoping you're hearing this as a parent, if you've had some bad conversations around this, as not judgment from us, but as grace for you to say, we all mess up these conversations. Oh, so many times. But the important thing is that we find ways to have open and honest conversations, because I want my child to come to me when these things happen. Um, when they're when they're experiencing bullying and they're not afraid that mom or dad's going to go, well, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be even having these conversations. You shouldn't even have that app. You shouldn't even be right. doing that. Instead, mom or dad can help prepare them because once again, your kid's life doesn't stop at eighteen. So even if you are able to be a great parent and shut all the boundaries, go, they're never even getting on any of this stuff. And right. When they turn 18, they will. And now they don't have the ability to come talk to you about how do I handle these situations because they're, they've never seen mom see me fail. They've never seen dad know the things that happen in my life and be able to help me. But we want to prepare them for it. Right. And like we said, more often than not, our kids are using these apps in in the right way, but, but we need to prepare them so that if they're faced with a scenario, Mm -hmm. they're, equipped with the tool that they need to move forward and make the right decision. And we want them to make the good choice and we want them to be able to um, navigate through that. And and we want to do it with them. We're their parents. We want to be connected to them in this. So, and I would, I would just have that conversation. I would have the conversation. And if, if you're trying to figure out the age, if you don't think you can reasonably have that conversation, they may not be old enough to, right. They may not be old enough to be on it, if I can't even set these limitations yeah. or have these conversations and you be able to understand kind of the nuance of it, then maybe we're not at that place. But here's the other point. If they already have the app, it don't matter what age you want them to right. start. You you got to treat it now. You're, you're in the middle of it because even if you shut everything down, kids are crafty right. and wily and <laughs> they will find ways around it. And, and you're not going to win. Yeah. And so the best thing you can do is say, how can we have open and honest conversations right. about this? So anyway, I hope that answers the question. I don't I mean, know if it if does. if you're asking us Snapchat or not, if that's if you wanted a black and white answer, there isn't one for no, it. No, because we, it's, a, it's, 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 it's not a great answer. It's not a great answer. <laughs> but we hope but, it's a good one. Yeah, we really do. Because it's one that every parent has to has to think through. Yeah. Because, like, it, like we said, it's a very popular a popular app, and if it's not this one, it's another one. Yeah. So it's just because I was going to say this. The other thing is, it's a messaging app. All the things you're afraid of that could happen on Snapchat can also happen on their text messaging. It can also happen on Kick or whatever, no. whatever text messaging app, Facebook, Even on mess- Instagram DM. Yes, no, Instagram most, direct messaging. I most apps, whether app messaging is the primary or not, ha- there is some sort of messaging component to yes. it. Yes. So. You know, I just think it's really important to root everything in these conversations that you're having yes. at home and just, you know, take each one as they come. And but but really, if you're not if you can't have the conversation with them, that's probably very telling. And I want to be clear. I know we need to be done. We said we we're going to be done at 25 minutes. That didn't happen. Never. But but I will say this. When I say you can't have the conversation, I don't mean that it would be uncomfortable for you. Or you think, oh, I don't think I could have that conversation. I mean, if you said the words, your child would go, I don't even understand what you're saying. So what I mean is if they're 11 and they can't, or they're 13 and they're just not really kind of relationally and socially mature and you go, I don't even think they understand the words I'm saying to them. That would be a determining factor. If they're 15 and it just makes you uncomfortable to think about, that's not a reason. Or you get an emotional reaction from them. Those aren't reasons. That's not a reason. If you back off because of that, then I'm just going to say get over yourself. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) That's not a great answer, but a really good one. It's one you need to hear. It's one that I need to hear. It's one that I have to remind myself. I need to hear often as well. So I I say that lovingly and I say that with 
because it's something I've experienced. And I think ultimately we want to have more of these kind of conversations. So use that description, uh, use that link in the description, yep. download Parent Q. Send, Hopefully we'll have more good send questions. Send us your questions. So thanks for being here today and we'll see y'all later. See ya.